Welcome to the Orthopedic Film Festival 2022, the first ever international film festival made for and by orthopedic and trauma surgeons. We want to take this opportunity to say a special thank to our chairs and pioneer partners Bauerfeind, Geistlich, Methis, Midi and Tetec, the innovative industry leaders supporting the realization of this flagship event. The minced cartilage technique, we stay with cartilage regeneration techniques, has been become popular or more popular within the last one or two years. And Stefan Schneider from Hamburg, he submitted a video to us. He is one of the instructors that also pushes the specific technique using minced cartilage in combination with autologous uh, conditioned plasma and that is what he is showing but he is showing a specific video on his application for a patella cartilage defect. Hello everyone and welcome to my video. I would like to share my experience in the atroscopic implantation of cartilage cells behind the patella with you. Due to the over-the-top position, the minimal invasive implantation sometimes can be challenging. First of all, I would like to show you how the patient is positioned. The patient is in a supine position. The femur is fixed in a leg holder and the use of a tourniquet with a pressure around 280 mm mercury is recommended because you want to implant the cartilage cells without any fluid. The leg should be extended completely because the more the knee flexes, you have a higher pressure in the patellofemoral joint, as you can see here. Due to the narrow joint gap, it is recommended to keep the pressure in this joint gap as low as possible to obtain the greatest possible distance between the back of the patella and the trochlea, as this is necessary for the implantation of cartilage chips. Before you implant the cartilage cells, you must evaluate the defect and the position of the defect. This is very important to make the implantation as easy as possible for you. You must ensure that all parts of the defect can be reached by your instruments. I would also recommend to drain the joint before you start with the implantation, so you can find out if, for example, synovia will protrude into the joint space. If so, you can reduce it with the high frequency. If you reduce it with the shaver, it may bleed. If a very narrow joint space is present, an additional suprapatellar portal can be created, for example. You can elevate the patella ventrally with the respiratory. If only a few millimeters are missing in order to reach the defect perfectly, it is advisable to use the atroscope like a lever to lift the patella a little out of the trochlea, as you can see here. In most cases, this is sufficient to implant the cartilage. If you want to treat the medial or lateral patella facet, you can also shift the patella direction to the defect. As you can see in here, the distance between the patella side of the trochlea has increased. You can now easily reach the defect with your instruments. In this video, I used the atroscopic minced cartilage technique. The cells to implant again were taken from the defect margin before, mixed with the PRP and transferred to the applicator as you will see soon. Basically, it should be mentioned that the treatment of patellofemoral pathology, for example with a trochleoplasty or a tuberositas tibia transfer, should proceed in any cartilage transplantation. Before the implantation, you have to make a debridement up to the subtural plate. Here you can easily use the shaver or a bone curette. If the cartilage defect has been present for a long time or if there is a pronounced bone marrow edema, you must be careful during the preparation. If available, a curved bone curette should be used for the preparation of the patella. This makes the preparation more comfortable and precise. You must compromise less to create a stable cartilage shoulder. When you're done with the debridement, you need to remove the fluid from the joint. The easiest way to do this is to take the shaver. If you now notice that there is a bleeding from the synovium, you can stop this again with the high frequency electrode. Then you can use a swab or a compress to continue the drying. The defect does not have to be completely dry, the cells you are transplanting, whether it's an ACI or even a minced cartilage transplantation, are also surrounded by several amount of fluid. Then start implanting the cells. To do this, insert the applicator. 
If you are treating defects of the patella or the medial or lateral femoral condyle, it is advantaged that the applicator is curved. This allows you to fit the cartilage easily. Since the cells are preloaded with a PRP, which has adhesive properties, the material adheres to the defect without falling out. You can use the applicator itself or the probe to make final adjustments to the cells. In the minced cartilage technique used here, the cells are finally fixed with a fibrin glue. The fibrin is produced autologously from the PRP. When you're done with this, the scope can be removed. If you have the impression that it bleeds more from the synovia, you can insert a drain without a suction. Just make sure that the drain is not placed in the graft area. In most cases, however, an, the insertion of a drain is not necessary. The knee then is immobilized in a splint for 24 to 48 hours. Afterwards, the patient can already start weight-bearing and extension, as well as passive flexion. Well, thank you very much for your interest. I hope I could give you some tips and tricks. Take care and bye-bye. Yeah, thank you, Stefan, and also welcome uh, to our studio. Hi, Hello. nice to see you, and I really appreciate the submission of your video. So, so once we followed your your uh, video, actually, Matthias and I were saying at the same time the delivery of the ACI product, or as you demonstrated from the fragmented cartilage. Uh, it hasn't looked that difficult because it's somehow adhesive and it sticks on the patella quite well. But uh, what is mostly the challenging part is the debridement. Since the patella moves and uh, there's no really good contact to the subchondral bone. Uh, do you want to comment on that and do you have specific tricks for that? Do you fix the patella during the debridement process? Yeah, I like to hold the patella in my... I like to hold the patella in my fingers and uh, fix it. So you have a little bit pressure when you um, put the the uh, curette or the shaver in, and so um, you can go to the subchondral plate. But uh, you're correct. Um, sometimes it's very loose, and then the patella goes to the right and to the left, and then this makes the debridement very uh, complicated. But if you fix it a little bit, um, or sometimes I like to, as I showed you, lever up the uh, patella with the scope, then um, it's a little bit more fixed and then it makes it easier to uh, make the debridement. Are you more or less using standard portals for that or do you use extra portals? Well, normally, I think in most of the cases, uh, I have the uh, normal portals, but sometimes I um, make um, a superior portal from the medial lateral side, um, which makes it more easier. But um, I think in 95% in, um, in, the, in the AutoCAD technique, which is, I think, a little bit easier than in the ICA um, because of the adhesive properties of the material you implant, um, it's uh, enough to, to make the anterior medial or lateral portal. And same question, I was asked how many percentage of the patella cartilage defects do you treat full atroscopically? How many do you use an open approach? I think in the, in the um, minced cartilage technique, most cases are uh, in the atroscopic way. But in the ACI, um, which is uh, yeah, not so adhesive sometimes, um, I open more uh, than in the uh, minced cartilage. But I think 95% of the of the minced cartilage technique um, are performed in a closed way or in a minimal invasive way. Oh, that's amazing. So do you make any differences in terms of rehabilitation for the minced cartilage atroscopically performed versus open approaches? No, normally not. Normally not. Um, they can stand on the feet directly and then the bending is a little bit limited um, over two weeks from uh, from uh, 20 to 60 and 90 degrees in the beginning and um, but normally I make no difference no. So thank you Stefan for sharing these insights with us and our audience and